Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I am Reema Tanduka. With me is Sonal Bhutra, and these are the top stories. Midcaps outperform larger pairs in a range bound session as stocks swing between gains and losses ahead of the year end. Metals, utilities lead the charge while financials lag. HEG charges up after it unveils plans to enter the lithium ion segment with capex of 2000 crore rupees. Time Technoplus gets an order win boost. Bullish brokerage commentary gives Equita Small Finance Bank and Mahindra CIE a boost. Equitas Capital says that PN Vasudevan continuing as MD and CEO is a big positive for Equitas SFB. Motilal Oswal, meanwhile, says that strong traction in the India business and the EV order wins will aid Mahindra CIE. Loris Lab slips after four workers lose their lives in a fire at its API unit in Vishakhapatnam. The company says it has launched an investigation into the tragedy. It does not expect any material impact on operations, though. Capacity Infra Projects gains on bagging a repeat order worth nearly 700 crore rupees for a South Mumbai project. <clears throat> okay, that's all the action that we are tracking on Midcap Radar today. A quiet mark day of uh, trade, right? But yes, in last couple of minutes, the Nifty has picked up some pace. So now it's up around 50 odd points. So just an hour back, it was up around 30 points. So yes, 20 point recovery is what we are seeing. Bank Nifty is the one that continues to underperform a uh, downtick of 110 points, but that too has recovered from the lows. But the star really is the mid cap index. So <clears throat> that one is up around 170 points. And of course, we'll detail the movers in the mid cap space as well. Uh, but Rima, quiet day, lack of global queues. Uh, but still, market uh, as steady as could be after being very volatile today. And a little bit of pickup though in the last, uh, you can see 30 minutes or yeah. so from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. And it's come through in a couple of these IT names. So pull up these mid-cap IT names like l and Technology. So that stock has surged to the high point of the day. It's currently up just about one odd percent, but you can see strength coming through. Sonata Software up 4%. Mastec has again going for itself and generally pull up the Nifty IT index and you would have seen a bit of a pickup. The Nifty IT index is now up close to about 0.6%. But let's get to our segment. Midcap movers, Vivek is here on the big wall and he's going to take us through the midcaps that are moving around in trade. Vivek? Well, good afternoon. You know, finally uh, seeing a couple of continuous sessions where uh, you know, markets continue to move higher and especially the mid-cap index. Uh, so, Usha Martin today, you know, this particular stock we're focusing on, entire metal pack is doing well. This stock too today has it a fresh 52-week high. Uh, newspaper, uh, newspaper company Sunday too is doing quite well in the session and first at the upper circuit of 20%. Navkar Corp on very strong volumes today is doing a strong up move and in fact continues its up move up almost 21% for this particular last couple of trading session. Uh, we are also talking about some of the other names. TTK Prestige, you know, last price stock, very strong volumes today. Godavari Par, after the strong CAPEX plan where the company indicated that it plans to increase its capacity by close to 40 to 50 percent, you know, this particular stock continues its up move. And JBM Auto 2 today moving up on strong volumes. Uh, now, some of the recent listings that we are tracking, uh, all of these listed in the last week, you know, the the listing for these stocks were very poor, but they managed to make a bit of a comeback in this particular week. So landmark cars, Abans Holding and Sula. Sula, in fact, continues its up move for the second straight session. Uh, also, two stocks that we've been highlighting through the day on the back of strong pricing up move in electrode makers, both uh, HEG as well as Graphite today moving up on strong volumes. On the other hand, some of the stocks, mainly profit booking in some of the names that we're seeing, Everest Canto, Morpen Labs, DreamFolks, you know, continues its weakness, and JNK back to uh, down today on strong volumes. All right, okay, Vivek, thank you so much for joining us with uh, that list. It's time to welcome Kush Bora for a technical check on the markets now. Kush, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, what are the charts suggesting now? Hi, good afternoon. First up, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, well, uh, you know, along with the charts, I'd also like to point out the derivatives data closer to uh, the expiry. The derivative, uh, the, the derivative data is starting to freeze up now. And what you can see is 18,000 put options seeing a strong buildup and 18,200 calls seeing a strong buildup. Now, that's the range that the markets could be in for the next you know, couple of days up until expiry, that is. Uh, similarly, on Bank Nifty, 43,000 call and 40 to 500 put is where we've seen a lot of action. So that's the range that you know Bank Nifty could be in. However, I feel that the buy could be mildly positive. So a 17,800 on a slightly broad basis uh, on the downside and 18,200 on the upside on Nifty and 40 to 200 on the bank Nifty on the downside and 43,100 on the upside. Now, just one uh, last point. 
the VIX has spiked from 12 to about 15 and a half levels. And you know, this could cause a bit of a storm in a teacup kind of a situation, right? Where like today, you know, we could be 150 points from days high and days low, but you know, pretty much be uh, you know where we were yesterday, right? So that kind of volatility is expected. So mild positive bias, but you know, a broadly range bound market for the next couple of days. Expect a range bound market for the next couple of days. Uh, Kush, what about stocks? Uh, I guess that we could still expect some action there because we've got the expiry on Thursday. Uh, so, what would your recommendations be for trade? Oh, plenty of action, uh, Rima, on uh, stocks. I mean, if you see a lot of stocks uh, that had, uh, you know, uh, corrected or rather just seen some profit booking, uh, booking, if I can call it that, you know, before the uh, three, four day uh, downslide that we saw, have actually started to bounce back. Metals are one play that, you know, we should have our you know eye out on. In fact, I've been saying this there for the next year, metals could perhaps be the sector, you know, that uh, one needs to watch out for. Uh, the last time when I was here, I said, you know, Hindalco is a buy with a target of 470. Good to see we are fairly close to that. So I'd want to maintain a buy on that 419 500 is what i would be, maybe be looking for as my next levels 450 is my target the second pick is titan now we've seen uh, you know a great degree of uh, relative strength in the stock even in this downturn and the stocks maintain its 200 you know day moving average very very comfortably so this is a buy on my radar uh, 2550 and 2575 would be my targets 2480 would be my stop loss Okay. All right, Kush. Thank you so much for joining us. That's a technical check on the markets. For now, we'll slip into a break. On the other side, we'll be joined by Ankur Patni, who's the executive director at Iron Exchange India, to discuss their recent order win and the business outlook as well. Thank you. Uh, stay tuned. Still tune into Midcap Radar on CNBC TV 18. As promised, the management of Iron Exchange is with us today. Earlier this month, the company won an order uh, worth 300 crore rupee from Indian Oil for a project in Haryana. Note that this project is expected to be commissioned over the next year and, and a half. Ankur Patni, who is the ED at Iron Exchange, is joining us now to discuss this order and the business outlook going forward as well. Mr. Patni, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, well, with this order, can you give us some sense of what kind of order book will it take uh, the company to and how much will it contribute to your financials in terms of margin? Is it a margin accretive project for you? Uh, well, uh, you know, the margins from this project uh, are expected to be in line with what you would generally see from our engineering order book. So it would uh, keep the margins uh, at similar levels. The order book uh, size after this uh, order would be close to around 3,000 crores. Uh, we declared 2,800 crores as our order book at the end of the second quarter so there has been some further additions to that on average what is the quarterly run rate or accretion to your order book what's the kind of order inflows you typically see and how has there been a step up in that in the quarterly order inflows yes as, as i mentioned uh, you know the uh, end of the second quarter you were uh, 2800 we were 2800 as of now we would be closer to 3000 crores uh, that's after whatever executions have taken place during this particular quarter. So there has been an uptick in the order intake. No, I meant, sir, uh, Mr. Patni, what I was trying to get at, uh, what is the average quantum of order inflows you typically see in the quarter? Is this your only order win in uh, the current quarter? Has there been more? What has been the total order inflows in this quarter? And how would it compare with the average of the last couple of orders? No, this has not been the only order win. Uh, we have uh, definitely got more orders. Typically, during the course of the year, we would uh, end up getting somewhere around uh, six to 800 crores. Uh, if you go by past trend lines, the last year had been better. We were seeing more than 1,000 crores of order inflows. We should be getting uh, total order inflows, which would uh, be in excess of 1,000 crore this year also. Uh, probably closer to the numbers that we saw uh, in the previous uh, year. Okay, take your point. You know, I was going through your quarter to conference call transcript as well, and there you did mention that some of the orders are facing delays because of delay that you're seeing in signing of larger orders because of approvals coming in late as well. Has that been uh, happening in quarter three as well? Uh, are you seeing more orders coming in from the government? Uh, there have been some delays which we were uh, experiencing, especially in the international market. Uh, in the domestic market, we are seeing a relatively improved flow of inquiries and orders. Uh, 
Uh, as far as government uh, orders are concerned, we are typically roughly around 20% uh, to 25%. That's uh, the percentage which the government orders contribute. Do you expect this delay in international orders in decision making and the, uh, you know, the, you know, even the uh, flow of orders to be slow for the next couple of orders on the international side? Uh, I, it's difficult to predict exactly, but uh, you know, the larger orders, especially from the government uh, sector, which we have been working for uh, on for quite some time, those are the ones which tend to stretch out more. Uh, we are. Uh, certainly seeing a little bit of an improvement coming in from certain pockets uh, in the international market. Uh, there has been a slight improvement in the Middle East. There has been improvement in the Southeast Asian markets uh, and in the African markets. So there uh, certainly seems to be a slight uh, uh, uptick in the inquiry book. And we are hoping that as we come to the close of the year, the flows from these markets would be better. Okay, take that point. So I wanted to speak to you about your chemicals business because it is a high margin contributor to the business as well. Uh, you are planning a capex here, a green field expansion. Uh, what is the update here? And 200 to 250 crore rupees, that's what you're putting entirely in this segment or will it be spread across? So this green field project is uh, to do with uh, resins, uh, which we are planning to have an expansion which will equal the current capacity of the company uh, on this particular product line. The uh, investments there, the project cost would be in excess of 250 crores. Uh, and that's entirely for uh, reasons. There would be, apart from this, there would be further capex in other lines of the business, which is on the engineering side uh, and in other chemicals facility as well. So why, when do you expect, uh, you know, some meaningful contribution from this project to start flowing in? Are all approvals in place? By when will it get commission? And what is the initial uh, revenue flow or asset turn that you're expecting here? Uh, we are still expecting environmental clearance to come through for this particular project. Uh, there's been uh, some delay beyond our expectations, but we do hope it will come in any time now. Uh, once it comes in, we would take roughly around one and a half years or so to execute the project. Uh, and the I would expect something around three to four years uh, for the capacity to be filled up. Uh, so after one and a half years, once the plant is up and running, but not fully operating at 100% capacity, what could be the expected revenues? What is the forecast that you've done year one, year two, year three, year four? Uh, See, it would build up towards 100% capacity utilization over a four-year period. I would not expect the first year to be uh, very uh, high capacity utilization, but uh, still it should be roughly around 40% uh, to 50% mark. But it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a guess, and we would be probably more in a position to give accurate forecasts once the plant is closer to completion. Okay, all right. So lastly, on your consumer division segment, is CapEx largely over in that segment? Uh, what is the growth opportunity here as well? And when do you expect to break even in this segment? A consumer segment, uh, there's not much of CapEx which happens uh, in that particular segment. Uh, we, uh, we are able to, you know, generate revenues which would probably be around two times of where we are without incurring any substantial capital expenditure in that particular segment. Uh, as far as break-even is concerned, we expect that by the end of this year, we should be very close to break-even, if not uh, you know, in the positive. Uh, just a final, um, you know, 2023 uh, you know, plans for you. What would be the top three things on your agenda? And if you could leave us with your FI23 revenue and margin guidance. Uh, we are looking for a very good growth number by the end of the year. Uh, in, in, in the last time we met, uh, I think we had given you a forecast of where we expect the growth to be. Uh, I would expect that compared to what uh, last year's uh, full year numbers, we should be around 30 to 35 percent uh, higher. And uh, as far as margins are concerned, I expect that to be uh, better than what we reported last year in terms of margin percentages. 
Okay, all right, Mr. Patney, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us here and explaining to us what your plans are and seasons. Greetings to you and everyone at Iron Exchange as well. That's the word coming in from Iron Exchange. Our 4.5% has been an outperformer this year. We'll sip into a short break now. On the other side, in our special segment, Midcap Spotlight, we'll focus on Time Techno Plus. Stay tuned. Still tune into Midcap Radar on CNBC TV 18, and this is our favorite Midcap Spotlight segment. The stock today that we are focusing on is Time Technoplast. It's come up from the highs, but is up around 5 odd percent today, and is up around 20 percent in this year so far. Uh, for the company, the news is that they have received a re repeat order from Adani Total Gas for supply of CNG cascades, and that is what the company really makes CNG cascades. Apart, uh, away, apart from other things that the company is ma manufacturing, the total order size here is 75 crore rupees, and the company company says that they will start delivery of these cascades from January 2023. Uh, that's not it. The company has been uh, uh, publishing some of the other uh, reports on the exchanges, which is positive for the company. On 6th of December, they spoke about promoter releasing pledge on 2 lakh shares or 0.09% of equity shares. It's a small amount, but nevertheless, promoter pledge has reduced and it has gone down from 2.87% to 2.78%. Uh, additionally, on 22nd of November, now remember the company is in the process of restructuring of their overseas business. They are planning to uh, sell it as well. Uh, that is progressing well. They are talking about consolidation come restructuring of overseas business here. The final stage of negotiations and discussion with the prospective investors is ongoing. And the proceeds that they will get from this will be used for debt reduction capex of composite cylinders as well so the focus will come back to their uh, domestic manufacturing facility and business as well the stock which is up 20 percent year to date and is higher today as well is down seven percent in december so far but yes this is something the news which is giving a flip to the stock today okay thank you very much for that let's also talk about mahindra cia that's buzzing in trade Sonia Motilal Oswal has initiated, um, you know, they have a buy rating on the stock. Tell us more. Absolutely. So the stock is buzzing. It's up almost about 4 odd percent on the back of a buy rating that's coming from Motilal Oswal, where they do have a target price of 360 on the stock. Now, they talk about how, uh, the, you know, there are a couple of reasons which are positives for the company. On one hand, the Mahindra CIE company is looking to sell its German commercial vehicle forgings business. And if that goes through, then it's a big positive for them. It will clean up their balance sheet and it will result in a better financial performance. They're also talking about very strong traction in the India business for Mahindra CIE. Now the EV orders are gaining quite a bit of momentum and that will result in better profitability. The management has reiterated its focus on profitable growth. They're also talking about improving their margins to 15% versus 12% uh, that they clocked in in 2021. So all in all, two reasons why Motilal Oswal is quite bullish. One is the proposed sale of the German commercial vehicle forgings business and the other is the India business gaining momentum. Back to you. Thank you very much for that. As we wrap up on the show, we leave you with some market opinion as a part of our special series, Wizards of the Street. PSC member Ramesh Damani caught up with Prashant Kimka, founder of White Oak Capital Management, and asked him about how India could become a major player in the global supply chain. They also discussed the prospects of the Indian IT sector. Listen in to what he had to say. And Mutual Fund Corner will be there when we return after that. Globalization is very much there for good and it is uh, maybe a bit of a speed breaker in the interim but for India it's actually can be a very positive game changer of sorts because the companies worldwide are very keen um, to diversify their supply chains. From China, from so it's the India plus one. Absolutely, from excessive dependence on China they want to diversify. India has the opportunity and um, it should grab it with both hands, which it is doing so, but I think there's always room to do a lot more. It's an opportunity that So Apple that does 5,000 crores of iPhone sales. Is that a telling sign to you? That is certainly, you know, from India's perspective, a very big positive. The opportunity size in front of us is, compared to that, is like tens of times, if not hundreds of times bigger, if you look at the manufacturing sector as a whole. IT services, if I take as an example, from time to time, they get written off by the market. Uh, one of the things that market has for the last decade or so believed is that IT services sector is an ex-growth sector in India. Because they think of, uh, or ex-growth sector because NASCOM and IT companies, they guide in dollar terms or constant currency terms, which are like dollar equivalent. So they talk about seven to eight percent growth. Now, you know, in India, seven to eight percent growth doesn't appeal to anyone. Doesn't wake if up anyone. Yeah, if yeah. you're, D less than double digit, you are no growth or slow growth company.